Travel rewards credit cards are certainly great, and as a frequent traveler, I love them. But the reality is for most people, including myself sometimes, cashback cards are the best. Cash is king and cashback rewards can be an excellent way to get some bonus points for your spending and not have to worry about the complications of using a travel rewards credit card. So if you're interested in a cashback rewards credit card, let me tell you what to look out for and how to find the best cashback credit card for you. The first thing that you need to know is your credit score. While a high credit score isn't necessarily a guarantee of approval, a credit score is typically the biggest factor that goes into a bank's decision to approve you for a new credit card. In most cases, a higher credit score means that you're more likely to be approved for a credit card, and that is a credit card with either better rewards, no annual fee, or both. If you are rebuilding credit or you're new to credit, you might not be able to get approved for a credit card with rewards. You might also be subject to a credit card with annual fees. Now, I have a separate video on that, and you can also check out NerdWallet for advice on building your credit. Credit. Assuming you have good to excellent credit, you have plenty of options of cards to choose from, which allows you to choose between these two things, a fixed rate card or a bonus categories card. Now, fixed rate cards allow you to earn rewards at exactly a fixed rate. It's common to earn rewards at anywhere between one to 2% of your spending. So say you've got a fixed rate card that earns 1.5% back. That means your $100 grocery bill will earn you $1.50 back, your gas bill will earn you $1.50 back, your $100 kids school play costume will also earn you $1.50 back. This can be an excellent way to keep your rewards super easy and super straightforward. Now, back in the day, it was common for fixed rate rewards cards to offer you 1% back. And that was really great, as I said, back in the day. But now we are in today and 1% is just not competitive anymore. These days, it's really common to see cards that offer 1.5% back or more. So if you've still got a card from the dinosaur ages that is only earning 1% back, assuming you have good to excellent credit, I definitely urge you to upgrade that thing to something that earns at least 1.5% back. However, you might even be able to do better. There are plenty of cards that offer 2% back and sometimes even more than that. However, these cards do have some sorts of caveats that make them not actually as realistic to hold as they might seem. There might be a requirement that you have to have a bank account open with the issuer of that card, which you probably don't want to have an extra bank account, so you might not actually want that. Some cards only issue you the full 2% back when you actually pay off your debt. Some require you to have a high account balance with the bank. All those things might not actually be realistic for you, but as long as you're earning 1.5% back on all of your purchases, you are doing great. However, you've probably seen credit cards that offer far more than 1.5% back, and these are most likely what's called bonus category cards. This is a pretty common type of card where in most cases you'll see the card offering a bonus rate, say three, four, maybe 5% in a couple specific categories, but then you'll earn 1% on everything else. So you might find a card that offers 4% back on gas and groceries, but then 1% back on all of your other spending. This is excellent because if you swipe it at the gas station, your $100 tank of gas will earn you $4 back. The challenge is then you swipe it for your kid's school play costume that was also $100 and you only get $1 back. These cards are great for people who really like to optimize and get the most rewards possible because you could really hack the system and you could have multiple of these credit cards. So you use your 4% back card on gas and groceries at the gas station and at the supermarket. And then you've got maybe a different credit card that earns bonus points on restaurants. You've got a different credit card that earns bonus points on streaming. So you can charge your Netflix and Disney Plus to that. Of course, you're probably thinking this sounds chaotic and it is chaotic. This is great for someone who is really optimizing and great at managing multiple cards. But the reality is this is gonna be a ton of cards to have in your wallet, a ton of cards to keep track of. This is many balances that you need to worry about paying off on time to manage multiple different logins to deal with. So this strategy might not be for everyone. Here's another note I want you to consider about these bonus category cards is that you need to know about what's called merchant category codes or MCCs. Now, it can be challenging to know, is the Starbucks inside of your grocery store considered a restaurant or is it considered grocery stores? Now, banks typically assign a merchant category code to each establishment, but the reality is it can be really tricky to find out what these MCCs actually are. 
Some banks will have tools and maps that you can sort of try to figure it out for yourself, but the reality is the best way to find out what the MCC is is simply through trial and error. Now, if you were expecting to get 4% back on your Starbucks Frappuccino because you thought it was inside of a supermarket, so it coded for your supermarket 4% back card, and then it codes as a restaurant, then you only get you know 1% back, and that can be really frustrating. So for people who don't wanna deal with that frustration or just don't wanna have a bunch of cards to manage, and keep in mind that could also be multiple annual fees to pay, having just one single fixed rate card might be the best option for you. Now there is one sort of kind of hybrid card also that I want you to consider, and these are rotating category cards. Rotating category cards are really interesting. Typically they'll offer a bonus rewards rate on a certain category, but that category will change every month or every quarter. So you might have a card that this quarter, it offers 5% back on gas and 1% back on everything else. Next quarter, it offers 5% back on Amazon and 1% back on everything else. Now, these can be really delightful, especially if your spending lines up with that category. So if you've got a road trip planned and the rotating category during that quarter is gas, well, that's awesome. If the rotating category is Amazon and it aligns with the holiday season and you use Amazon to do all of your gift shopping, then that's also awesome. But it can be annoying because as I said, it's just one more thing to track. Also, typically you have to opt in and banks won't give you the bonus points unless you actually opt in, which typically requires logging into a new website. That's just one more thing to have on your to-do list every quarter it can be really irritating. But for people, again, who love to optimize every little thing, it can be also nice to consider these rotating category cards to get some delightful extra bonus points every quarter. The third thing that you need to consider is the annual fee. Now, there are plenty of excellent cashback credit cards that offer no annual fee, and I encourage you to visit NerdWallet for some comparison tools on finding the best cashback credit card with no annual fee. However, there are credit cards that offer bonus cash back and they do have an annual fee. Do some calculations to find out how many extra rewards you'll earn. So maybe if a credit card has an annual fee and earns 5% back versus the no annual fee credit card earns say just 2% back, calculate the difference and make sure that you subtract the annual fee from your overall rewards rate to account for that. Of course, many cashback credit cards with annual fees do have other perks that go along with it. For example, I have a cashback credit card that not only does it offer more than 2% back on all of my purchases, but it also comes with an $100 airline incidental credit. So although there is a $95 annual fee, I use that airline incidental credit every year. And so I find that that sort of negates the annual fee. And then of course the elevated rewards rate makes it worth having. Now, I told you about all the big stuff, but I don't want you to overlook the small stuff because this can be really important. So here are some other things I want you to consider. The first is APR, this is the interest rate. Now, if you always pay off your credit card balance in full every month, then this is something that you don't need to worry about. But the reality is many people do carry balances month to month. So I want you to understand what the APR is. Cashback rewards cards are typically not good for people who carry balances. That's because while they have a high rewards rate, they probably also have a high interest rate, but the rewards rate is typically never enough to justify the amount of money that you'd pay in interest. If you do expect that you'll pay interest on your credit card debt, I urge you to look for a different credit card with low or no interest rates. Another thing that I want you to consider is foreign transaction fees. Many credit cards won't charge foreign transaction fees. Those that do will typically make you pay about 3% of whatever your purchase is. Again, if you're never traveling internationally, then don't worry about this. But if you do think that you are gonna travel abroad, at least in some point in your life, you really don't wanna pay this fee. And there are so many credit cards that don't charge it. So make sure that you look for one that doesn't. Speaking of international travel, I also want you to consider international acceptance. Many credit cards are not accepted widely internationally. Uh, it's pretty common for American Express cards and Discover cards to be less likely to be accepted than a Visa or MasterCard. If you're traveling internationally, you don't wanna be stuck with only one credit card that suddenly the cafe won't accept because say it was an American Express card and that cafe doesn't accept inter American Express. I've even been to cafes locally here in the US that say we don't accept American Express. If you are gonna have one of these credit cards, it's always a good idea to have a backup as well, just in case. 
And finally, I want you to keep in mind the other benefits. I mentioned earlier some of the other benefits, things like I get an airline incidental credit. You might also consider a, a benefit that I see more and more frequently these days is cell phone protection. So if you charge your recurring cell phone bill to the credit card, then they'll offer insurance on that cell phone should the screen crack. These are all good benefits to consider, so make sure you put them into the calculation and often these benefits can be even more worthwhile than simply the cashback rewards. Cashback rewards credit cards are an awesome tool to really easily rack up rewards whether you choose to spend them on your next travels or you simply use them on your next month's rent. Charge your purchases to a cashback rewards card assuming you have excellent credit and you can get those purchases paid for easily. I'm Sally French, a travel and credit cards writer for NerdWallet. Make sure you check your cashback balance right now. Some of it isn't automatically sent to your account. So look, you might have a huge balance there waiting for you. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe.